opportunity, he just didn't take it, and said he just wanted to wanted a new boss to obey. And I, you know, I'm not as cynical as Orwell was. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Orwell would be laughing at me from the great beyond about, oh, uh, he would be disappointed. Yet I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, I do believe that um, the lesson to take from something like Animal Farm, for me, the lesson to take from the failed revolutions in the past is not, oh, it's all hopeless, but oh, we have to not make the same mistakes they made back then. We have to not fall back into the uh, give us a new leader to obey attitude. And uh, that's, I don't know, that's the lesson that I hope this play offered. I don't know if everybody will take whatever lesson they want from it, but that's what I hope we were offering up there. Yes, sir. I certainly agree with the sentiment that uh, Occupy isn't alone in world revolutions. I think uh, what's uniquely at the disposal of Occupy and the Arab Spring is the extent to which we have instantaneous and global communication, but that's another thing. Um, I think that it's problematic though to think that revolutions like the communist revolution uh, 1917 were entirely failures. I mean, and, and and in another sense, this is obviously arguable, but the American Revolution of 1776 to 1780, what it was at nine that the Constitution was finally formed after that first one that failed. Uh, we need to realize that revolution is a work in progress and that human systems are finite, that it's impossible, impossible to create a perfect government, impossible to create a perfect discourse community, that the ideal can't exist because we are not ideal. And I, I think it's important to realize that revolutions may have been appropriate for their time, but it's time that we figure out what's appropriate for our time. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I would like to touch on that. We talked about uh, the revolution of 1776 when we uh, got our country. Yeah. What a quote. Cool. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 No, I've, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, I have a little sign on it. <laughs> um, but, they gave George Washington the like keys to the castle, basically, or the keys to the castle, and they said, "Here be king," and he was like, "No, nah, no thanks. I'm just gonna be president." <laughs> and like, I think that George Washington's like no, uh, no relation, right? <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> like, rick, 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 rick. <laughs> I thought so. Selfish. We all work for each other instead of working for. Now, oh, like a phrase that I'm going to steal to because about 500 people have stolen it. And like every GA that we've had in the past, like maybe. Like, <laughs> that um, this is a leader full movement and not a leader filled. Mm -hmm. Or it's a leader full movement instead of. No, we, we, no, yeah. no, it's not a leaderless movement, it's a leader full movement. Many leaders? I mean, he gets stuff done, I get stuff done. We all get stuff done in our own little way. And, you know, I think just that and the fact that it is all instantaneous with the world today, that we're moving for something that's more than just for our own paycheck and our own ambitions it's more than we're working for the good of humanity and not too many people I feel have work just for the betterment of humankind which makes this so unique especially in Buffalo the city of neighbors where everyone loves each other like you'll have a benefit on a Saturday for someone with a sore throat and you'll make who knows how much fun. <laughs> <laughs> She knows my sense of humor. But you are the fellow here from Trench coming yeah, from yeah. so Let me. My, my yeah. one, oh, yeah. one thing I gotta say, you know, I think is um, you know, everybody is just tired of living with ancient ideologies, really, you know. And it's just, it's like you talk about world revolution and all these ancient ideologies that don't apply to us nowadays. You know, I think that's what we're trying to change. You know, 
And I think the biggest lie, period, like think about the word perfect, black. Like well, what is perfect? Like define perfect in one word. Define it to mean a couple of sentences in a paragraph. There is none. There is none. And I think the biggest lie is telling us that we're not perfect and then to create a certain type of standard of what perfect is and we're always trying to reach that standard. And we never do. That's why we always live, live beyond our means. You know, like you look at, you know, like I, uh, a sign that um, my, my brother's mom used to tell me, like he, he's a good brother of mine, we, we grew up together. She used to tell me lies don't have legs. She was like, um, it, will, it will always be revealed. You know, you just gotta dig, dig real deep into it and it'll expose itself. You know, like, like it's just, I think it's, you know, I look at everything. Sometimes if I look at it from a, from a, a perspective differently than human, and, and if you could really look at it, imagine you was like some type of alien visiting Earth and you could really experience want everything in like a month and then you come back with your own conclusions. And you look at it, you could tell a human being, be like, you guys are fucking up. Like all of y'all. Yes. Like all of y'all. Like yes. seriously. You know, and, and people need to like really realize like all these, who are these people in power that, that could rule a country? You know, that could rule you know, certain types of nations, you know, and then you start asking yourself questions, we've been lied to. You know, we've been lied to since, since the day we were born, you know, and our kids are born with those lies also. You know, that's why I always, I always make sure that I'm attentive towards my kids, you know, because if I don't start with them, you know, there's gonna be a sad world, you know, for, for the rest of these kids, you know, yeah, we really have to start with them. We, we, we're, living, we're the older ones living with the bullshit, it's time to clean our closets out. It's, look at the world like a big living room, clean the shit out, and then we renovate it. You know, the whole purpose of this movement is to make this world a better place. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, I think the common theme throughout a lot of the conversation, throughout the play, throughout the movement, is, you know, we're talking about what type of change do we want? Is it something external? Is there a specific focus? A lot of movements have been based around something specific, like we want this bill passed, we want this freedom, this specific uh, right of freedom to be acknowledged. And I think, you know, it's so much larger than that. Um, because it's ourselves. The biggest re revolution is within ourselves. And people say that, like the revolution of the heart, the revolution of the mind has to happen before any revolution. But I don't think a lot of people really understand what that means. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's way easier to focus on the external. We'll just change the economy. We'll just change the political system. All we need to do is get money out of politics and everything will be okay. Well, things will be slightly better because they won't be infected by that amount of greed. But that greed isn't about money and politics. It isn't about economies. It's about human nature and about the way people are raised and developed and treated in society. And I think the biggest thing is for people with privilege, whatever that means to any population, to have to examine that privilege and to give it up. If you're in a better spot than somebody else in life, it's really hard to step out of that spot and be like, here, I'll share that spot with you or I'll give up my spot that's better off, clearly, and give it to somebody else who doesn't have that, who has never had the experience. And I think that's what has been uh, the crux of all the failed revolutions or successful <coughs> revolutions. I mean, Napoleon was ruled, ruled completely by emotion. Snowball was completely ruled by intellect. And I think what we're desperately lacking, what this whole revolution needs to be about, is emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. People to really be in touch with their emotions and how to connect with other human beings in a smart way. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Very well said. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. First of all, yes. Yeah. <laughs>